today I have some eucalyptus leucoxylin flowers they're beautiful so I thought that I would show you how to paint the flowers so if you've already done my eucalyptus leaf tutorial where we worked on this type of composition you can see now where the flower comes out and if you wanted to do another painting you would be able to add some flowers into that composition so so you would just have them coming out where the the base of the leaf the petiole comes out and then this one there's only two um, there can be more than that I'm just going to paint one just to show you how to do it so I'm going to put these back in the water I'll just take one off and I'll put that back in the water the flowers shrink very quickly so um, you can measure that's kind of helpful because sometimes you might be likely to make things too large or too small so right across that flower is about four centimeters three and a half four centimeters and then the whole length of that is about well that's about four centimeters as well so i'm going to start i'm just going to sketch i'll put a mark on there i'm just going to sketch the shape of this okay now you can have it facing side on you can have it facing away or you can have it facing towards you so however you do that will determine the shape of this here so it will either be straight across which is probably not the best way to do it or if it's facing away this curve comes down if it's facing forward that curve will go up and there'll be some stamens in front so the easier way is to have it facing away i will show you both ways okay and then what did we say about four centimeters so that's about two out there and about two out there so that will be the furthest stamens okay but they're kind of coming there's there are some going straight out but not many and then there's a lot coming coming down they're all a little bit wonky there's a few layers of them so there'll be some over the top some underneath so it's good just to do a sketch first work out roughly where you want everything then also i can see the style coming down now it will be coming straight through like that so it's important to put that in line so if i imagine there's something coming down there it's kind of will be like that then with the red stamens around the outside now where they join here there will be some darker shadows in there so you can sort of just you know pop those in and it just gives it a bit more depth there okay and then all of these these stamens are made up of filaments and anthers so you can see we're lucky here most of these are dark um, the anthers at the tips so and some of them actually don't have any they've come off so you don't just go dot, 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 dot. if you actually join them onto the filaments the painting will make more sense and it will have more depth okay so that's roughly how to draw it and of course we have the light coming from the left which is not great at the moment but you can see so then there's a shadow down that side so we'll have some reflected light here and then we'll have a dark here coming up and so 
sort of like that. So that will be the darkest. This will be the highlight here. So then you'll sort of have a mid-tone on that side. And the reflected light will kind of be a mid-tone there as well. It won't be as bright as this area here. Okay. So if it's facing, then, sorry, then you'll have... Now I am putting those dots in the way that I said not to. Don't do it that way on the final painting. So if it's facing forward, then you do the same sort of thing, just roughly sketching this one. And instead of going this way with the line, we'll go this way. Okay. And then, once again, we'll have this style coming down. So these can all be the same measurements. But this time, and these filaments coming out, this time there will be like this sort of shape going on here. So these top filaments will be coming down here like that. So it will be going over the front of that style. Then we have some coming out the edge here. Okay, and then, okay, there's the style. Then there will be others coming from underneath. And in there will be a shadow. So that you can have see that depth under there. Actually, that's, it depends how far up you go with that. This could be even shorter here with these and that could be coming up higher. Okay, and same again here. Putting that down there and then these shadows, that sort of darker area there. There'll be a lot more filaments coming over here. I'm drawing them very straight. They really are quite wonky. I hope you can see that. And then these ones underneath will be kind of wonky as well. So what I'll do now is draw a careful drawing that I will then paint. So I'm just going to sketch it. This this is just this is just sketching. This is just to have a practice. Um, I would make sure that I had very carefully worked out my composition if I'm doing this on an actual painting, then the lines that I put on the painting is the only line. I wouldn't be sketching like this. I would transfer this over to the watercolour paper um, just as one line so that I don't mess up my paper. Okay, and I don't want to put... This is HB. What I might actually do is find my 2H... Two H, and I'll just go over that line. Okay, and I'll just pop in a few of those, and this one coming down here. Just pop that style in. Okay, and then I'm going to use. And I do needable eraser to remove the HB lines that were underneath there. Okay. Okay, now I'm ready to do some painting. So I've just mixed up a bit of a brown using some French ultramarine and burnt sienna. Um, 
you can see there's some brown just around the tip there so I'll just carefully pop that line in and that's where all my stamens will come from now knowing roughly that how long these are sort of how long my filaments are going to be so it's fairly solid it's a fairly solid red underneath there and then it comes out as the filaments and then you can sort of see the light behind so what I'll start with is some permanent rows and I'm just going to block a little bit of that in so not all the way to the end but it's fairly solid sort of to about there I guess I'm not going to put it as one solid line across there but certainly up here it's filled in so that helps get things started then you need to let that dry before you do anything else and I'll just drop a little more permanent rows into that Okay, while I'm waiting for that, I'll draw my other one over here. Once again, so facing that one towards us, kind of following this one. Okay. there and I'll just kind of dot in okay now I'm going to move to my 2H just go over that line not too hard as I said this is just for practice you'll be very very careful if you're doing this on your final painting. Okay, I'm just gonna pop in a couple of those, showing where those filaments are going and these little ones down here. Just enough, hopefully, just to give me a bit of a road map okay and again i'll just put in that um just put in that i'll just suggest that line there not i won't do it as solid because I am going to have some of these filaments. Some of these filaments can actually, depending on the angle, can actually kind of come up in front like that. So that can look quite interesting as well. So I might actually put a couple of those in like that. All right. Um, And I'll do the same again. Now this probably will come all the way down to here now. In the center anyway, not all the way out. And actually, underneath where that 
shadow is going to go, I'm just going to put just going to put a little bit of that shadow in there, which is just a brownie colour that I've mixed up with burnt sienna and French ultramarine. Now I can add more to that. I don't want to make it too big, but that'll, that'll, that's a good start, I think. And when that's dry, you can even feather a little bit up underneath there because you can see some shadows in through here. Okay, just let all of that dry. Okay, it's actually the next day now. I've had a few interruptions. And I put this flower into, just put it into some water. And gosh, it's actually held its shape and its size really well. I'm, I'm quite surprised. Now, I want to have a little go at um, just matching some colour here. I did put just some permanent rose under here. But if we have a really good look at this colouring... Um, might just practice down here. Uh, if I just get some permanent rose, let's see, I'll try and make it quite intense. Permanent rose can be a really beautiful colour. Is my heater going on now? Um, you know, when it's sort of diluted like that, but it can, you can get it quite intense. But I feel like there's a little bit more blue. It's a bit cooler than that. So another beautiful colour that I have here is Quinacridone Magenta. It's a Daniel Smith brand. And that is also getting kind of close to the mark, I think. So it could be somewhere in between that. And look, there is variation within the flower. So even those two mixed together. Yeah. I think that the two mixed together actually could be quite nice. All right. Now... Now we're really up to um, painting in the individual stamens. I might actually just sort of stand it up like that. Um, okay, I'll just mix some more of that colour together. Permanent Rose and the Quinacridone Magenta. Okay, and now I'm going to turn this around. Um, this is my, uh, this is a number one brush. The tip is actually not that great, so we'll see how we go. Um, actually, I might just start... So I'm just letting the brush come off at the end to sort of taper to a point with those stamens. I'm trying uh, not to make these lines too straight. Okay, now I'll 
gonna turn it around this way. So just where the stamens are coming into the end of the capsule here, it's going to be more intense, a bit darker in there. So I'm just building that up a bit more. Uh, but I think the rest of that is pretty good. I'm trying to make it so they've got some individual stamens. Um, sort of going in a few different, slightly different directions. Just a bit of a bit of a mishmash. Now there are some deeper shadows in there. So I'm going to mix a little bit of um, I'm gonna get a shadow mix again and I'll just pop a bit of that pinky colour into my shadow mix. Uh, so I'm mixing some French ultramarine and burnt sienna and then I'm just adding a little bit of, um, of the pink. Now I'm going to use a smaller brush now. So right in here we can add some really dark darks. Just small lines, not coming out too far.
Okay. Um, and of course, I still need to come back and do the rest of it, but I think this is the tricky bit. So once again, using that same sort of dark shadowy mix, so it's almost a dark purple. And I'm just going to pop some of those little anthers that we talked about earlier. Just pop some of those on here and there. They don't have to be on every single stamen. If you can, sort of do some, some of these stamens shorter and some longer. So there's a little bit of variation within that. Okay. Just gonna test a couple of brush strokes. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit lighter this time and I'm using, I'm going straight for my small brush now. go a bit darker now so I'm just going to you know we've marked where the shadow should go so that's where the top stamens are coming down to there oops so I'll just mark those ones in I'm going a lot lighter this time which is really probably more my style to build things up quite softly and slowly. Getting a bit darker now. Sort of squiggly lines everywhere. Okay, what I might do now is um, just with a slightly darker mix, I'm going to come down here. Now remember, this style is coming in front, so we need to put these stamens behind it. So they, that there will be some in front there, but these ones are going behind. So I've put the shadow in, but the stamens are coming out longer than that So I'll go quite dark where that shadow is. I'm just going over that with the darker pink. So we don't want that line to be there. Oh yes, you can really see some depth in there now. And the other thing is that there will be some dark lines, some shadows sort of coming up into those stamens as well. So and 
if there's a bit of a dark, um, a light line there, that won't actually be there. So you just need to keep sort of working on that area. Okay, that's starting to come together. All right, and now I'll just come back up here and just keep working on these. this join to sort of work here So I'm putting some dark lines in there now, um, not everywhere, just to mix it up a little bit, give it a bit of variation. Um, Now I'm using a shadowy mix again, mixed with the pink, just to pop a few darker lines up there again. And then once again, just sort of coming down, not all the way down. So I feel like it's, it's quite blue now, so I'm going to, it's quite cool, so I'm going to just add a bit more permanent rose just here and there to brighten that up a little bit. I think that's looking pretty good.
Yep. Um, I'll just pay a bit more attention to where these stamens are coming down. Okay, and and then um, with that shadowy mix mixed into it's sort of a just show you it's kind of a dark purple but I just used the shadowy mix and mixed it into our pink and now just give a bit more definition pop those anthers on the ends of the filaments try and keep it a little bit random not too perfect so remember the stamens are coming down here in front of this style so there'll be some anthers here and then the, the ones that are underneath are down there Okay, so that's kind of how we're getting that depth there. Could possibly put just some little shadowy lines. They really need to be very fine. I think that's the main thing with these flowers. The lines need to be really fine because you're sort of painting the negative space in here when I'm putting these dark lines in it's the negative space between the stamens okay um, you can see a definite um, where it's sort of changes shape there uh, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of shadow right there and I'm just going to bring some dark down here so this is just some shadow mix that I've added to the green okay and I'm going to just darken just doing some really little strokes down here just to build up a little bit more intensity around there. That highlight's still too big, so I'm just using a bit of a lighter green to just bring it in, just light little strokes. And as you darken some areas, then you realize that other areas need to be darkened again as well. So there's a lot of toing and froing, and that's fine. You don't need to go in really dark straight away. So there is going to be, this is in shadow, but there is some reflected light on this side.
okay. I'll just build up a little more here. Okay, I mean, you can do as much as you want here. If you want to get really dramatic, you can pop in some real contrast here with, uh, this is just a straight shadow mix. You know, you can really build that up there if you so desire. And they're a cute little shape. Now, this line in here is quite dark, so I'm going to come back, put some shadow in there. When I say, I mean a shadowy mix. So, just, just a, sort of a grey. And just pop that around there. Okay, um, now the other thing, I'm looking down here and I'm just going to put, just darken that up a bit more there and a um, tiny bit of shadow just where that's sort of coming out under there, a little bit down on that right hand side. I'll just put a little bit of shadow over here as well. Sorry, I'm going back and forth from one to the other. Um, okay, but at the same time, I really want to make sure that stands out from the background there. Okay, and... So, and there's some little imperfections on here. So, just a few little dots here and there. These are teeny tiny, but there'll be some that are a bit larger as well. When they're in the highlight, they'll be just a bit lighter than these other ones. Okay. Right. I'm pretty happy with that one. Okay, now over here. Just a bit of a darker green to go on here. got this sort of orangey colour and I've just added a bit more um, burnt sienna to it. Sometimes it's hard to see if there's actually paint even going on there. Okay, bit of shadowy mix into that colour, that uh, orangey colour. Give a bit more form to that shape. Okay. 
thing. That one's looking pretty shiny, but I'm happy with that. Um, and just soften that a little bit so then it's just not quite as shiny if you soften the edges. If it's a hard edge, it will make it look quite shiny there. Okay, uh, and um, the shadow, shadow mix again in here, but we can't see all of it because some of those stamens are sort of popping over. So I'll just sort of drop it in here and there. But uh, it really does help in your painting, any painting really, to have just some areas of really dark. Now, I mean, the light, as I said, the light is coming from the top left. So you could even darken this up a little more if you wanted to. Maybe, maybe I'll just add... A bit more, not shadow, but just a bit more colour over here. Just a bit more of that pinky red. Such a pretty colour. Just to... Right. Um, okay. Definition there and over here. All right. I mean, you could keep going. You know, there you can do. I mean, probably not hours, but. <laughs> um, there just does come a point where you have to stop, but um, and you have to make that call. But I think that is a pretty detailed flower. Um, I can't really see much else that I could do with that. Maybe build up a little more intensity in here but then it could get a bit the same the same you know maybe it could be a little bit darker just here also sometimes the stamen the um, anthers on the stamens actually have a bit of light so you might be able to see right in here you know there's a little bit of pollen on them so sometimes you might want to put a little bit of um, mix some white into some lemon yellow and just pop that on the stamens and then put um, the purpley sort of color over the top. Here I've just got a little bit of titanium white and, and a little bit of Windsor lemon. I'll just sort of show you what I mean. Um, I don't really want to do it on there. I'll do it, show you down here. You can just sort of, and, and look, it's a bit opaque because I've mixed it with the white. So you can sort of pop it on like that, not that big. Keep it small still. And then with that dark purpley color, you can go back over the top. It just gives it um, perhaps a little bit more dimension. Also, once you use white, it does dry lighter, ah, uh, darker. Okay, and if you think the style is not standing out enough, once again, you could just put a little tiny touch of white on that. 
and if that dries too light then you can go over it with some more color um, oh actually what I haven't done is put some imperfections on this one see there's not so many there but there are a couple you know there's some larger ones and some smaller ones so I'll get a trying to mix up the shadow mix dark enough okay and just a few little things so some larger some smaller They don't also so like that one's I've made that quite dark there but um, I could just get you know a bit of a green for example and pop that on here and there and it's gonna be a bit more subtle so all of those imperfections they're not always the same color Okay, I think that's done.